Hey folks, this is Gabe at security.org. And did you know that in 2016, Pew Research Center did a survey and they found that basically 70% of American internet users did not know what purpose a VPN served. We here at security.org try to talk to people about why VPNs are actually more of a security feature than a privacy feature. And in today's part three of our digital safety guide, I wanna talk about what exactly that means. Now to begin, of course, let's just start with the definition of VPN. This is an acronym we hear all the time, but I'm gonna take this directly from our digital safety guide, which of course you can read down below. Now, VPNs are virtual private networks that encrypt your web traffic in a tunnel, hiding your web activity and replacing your IP address. They're especially useful if you're on a public network like a coffee shop, or if you simply want access to another country's servers so you can enjoy something like you know Netflix Italy or something of that nature. In addition to VPNs, you have identity monitoring services. So this is another product. And in fact, many of these products actually include their own VPNs. Now, what do these identity monitoring services do? Well, for one, they help protect your credit. They are looking at TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax to ensure that people aren't just starting new credit cards in your name. Now, this is something that's important because if you haven't done anything from the first two parts of our digital safety guide, you may find that your you know, information is compromised, your credentials are compromised, and someone, for example, does something like starts a credit card in your name and just starts spending a lot of money. Now, if something like that goes down, uh, you're gonna want to be notified of it, and it's not super uh, obvious if your bank doesn't call you or someone doesn't call you because they've set an entirely new identity up for you, another account for you, because they have your birth date, they have your social security number, things of that nature, then you're gonna be in a lot of trouble, which is why it's useful to not be on the hook for these things with identity monitoring service, because typically they will insure you up to you know a million dollars for any potential losses under your identity. They can also do things like reimburse you for medical records. They can make sure your children aren't being defrauded in terms of their social security number and information for any nefarious purposes. Um, and they can even give you emergency travel assistance, which is really important when you find yourself in the middle of nowhere. Now, a final shout out I wanna make regarding digital security are password managers. I have tons of various accounts online from Dick's Sporting Goods, to the New York Times, um, to the Atlantic, all these different places, I have some type of credential up there. And I you know, don't wanna reuse passwords, anything of that nature, so I employ password managers. Now to recap part three of our digital safety guide, just to remind you that of course, there's so many pieces to the puzzle when it comes to your digital safety. And some of those pieces are things like VPNs, password managers, and identity monitoring services. All of these work in conjunction with, of course, your common sense, the things we talked about in parts one and part two, and just using the settings that come in, things like your browser and your phone to keep you safe. Now, if you have any questions regarding any of this, or you wanna check it out, please dive into security.org, leave us a comment below. We'd love to respond to you. And as always, my name is Gabe. This is security.org. Be secure. <laughs>